Hello and welcome to another episode of Peace Loving Guns. Yes, we have another Ghostbusters Spangler Neutrona 1 video for you. This is going to be the first of probably a couple mod videos and taking this and turning it into something that we can really love and be proud of. Uh, I went ahead and taken the liberty of doing a little bit of uh, paint touch-ups and weathering. Um, I added some copper to the banjos and uh, kind of made this more silver or bolt gun metal by uh, Games Workshop and uh, put a little bit of silver on there to kind of almost give the uh, look that it had been uh, kind of overheated and uh, the metal the metallurgy kind of changing as a result of uh, heat uh, so we kind of got a little bit of additional weathering there I de-weathered some spots with some black to kind of take some of the the shine off doesn't look so much like they just streaked it with the paint pen and um, I put a little bit more of that bolt gun metal in other places to kind of give a more natural weathered look and then with the knobs I ended up putting this uh, kind of black inset and then wiped the excess away and just kind of did that until it gave me kind of a detail that metal is really shiny from the factory and um, I wanted it to look a little bit more uh, real, more weathered, more used. Uh, so now it's got black in the crevices on each of these little knobs. So let's go ahead and get into what we're doing here today. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to be doing a Slimer blob delete from the Spangler Neutron one, and we're kind of taking this from being a, uh, a movie replica toy piece and we're gonna turn this into a my neutron wand. <clears throat> so we're gonna delete this Slimer blob because it's gross. What were they thinking? Like, look how large this gob of rubber is. Uh, if Egon thought that was cool and more comfortable for him, cool. Um, but for me, I kinda want it to feel more like a traditional neutron wand. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a hobby knife or razor, uh, carpet cutter, uh, or just a regular knife with a good sharp edge and just kind of work along and cut. Uh, I just went along the seam here. I wouldn't worry too much about scratching the plastic, just don't like gouge way down into it. Um, and as soon as you start getting a little bit, you can start lifting this up. And as you cut, you get all the way through it. I went ahead and did this just to kind of see what was under there and of course they didn't mold in this full um, plastic grip so you're left with the slimer blob which is absolutely huge um, and that's just going to go in my box over there and uh, just kind of stay if i ever want to put it back to uh, stock i might be able to do that uh, but i'm not seeing myself probably likely to do that this actually feels really good um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to use the Nerdy Notions uh, Grip Mod Fill uh, by Xander. Uh, Xander is a guy who's on numerous Ghostbusters Facebook groups and he does uh, 3D printing. And this is his card, Nerdy Notions. He's on Facebook, Etsy, and the Instagrams and he has a wide variety of stuff that he 3D prints. On the Facebook groups, I don't know if uh, he's selling these on his Etsy store or not, but on the Facebook groups, uh, he is advertising this for like $5 plus shipping or something goofy like that. It was extraordinarily cheap. I don't remember what I paid for it. And I don't know if he's still doing them for whatever price I got this for, um, but he is very fair on that. In fact, um, I ordered one from him and it didn't come in the mail and it had been a couple weeks and I asked him about it and he just no questions asked sent me another one so that's really cool of him um, it's not a perfect part once you get it um, it does fill in it does fit uh, the Neutrona one really well so this part of it's modeled uh, pretty well but it didn't uh, have the exact contours that I wanted specifically for my hands uh, so I went ahead and did a couple mods to this uh, I did shave the grip down a little bit, but this is what it does. It uh, fills in the gap just like it's supposed to. Um, the plastic overhung a little bit right here, and being that this is a PLA fiber, 
uh, that's 3D printed. You can see the, the line markings there. Um, so what a lot of people are doing is they're wrapping over this. Um, so they're still having a grip wrap, but it's not this gross Slimer blob. Um, but it does cover up the, the PLA. If you want to, you can uh, sand over this. You can apply Bondo or JB Weld I've used in uh, a couple occasions before, and you can sand over this and you can make this, you know, kind of a, a full uh, grip with, um, you know, kind of a smooth uh, full grip. But you can see there is going to, of course, be a little bit of a seam there, but it gives us that nice, um, that nice grip and uh, it's got a good feel to it. It fills those edges in. Uh, since this is PLA, I did go ahead and just hit this with the lighter and it allowed me to smooth that down and match that. Uh, I did a little bit of, uh, I did do a little bit of filing on the inside of this. You can see where um, there's kind of tracks. Uh, I just took a file and set it down on the desk and filed it and kind of got it where I wanted it to so that it would, oh, that's wrong so that it fits absolutely perfectly because I want really good mating surfaces. A lot of people are just uh, taping this on. Um, I imagine some people are probably super gluing theirs in place as well. Um, I'm going to be using JB Weld. I want mine to be a permanent fixture. I don't want there to be any play in it whatsoever. Um, and I want all the surfaces to bond. So I went ahead and, and filed that to fit. And I changed the contour of the grip a little bit up to to suit my little girly hands but uh, I've got the contour that I want it looks really good um, those edges match up uh, stock that's um, that's how the piece is printed and um, yeah looks really good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up some JB weld and we're gonna go ahead and apply some to this part of the wand the handle and we're gonna go ahead and stick it on and uh, do a temporary wrap and let that, that glue chooch. I'm gonna do so by using a little plastic uh, like Tupperware lid from Chinese Takeout. And I'm gonna mix it up here. I'm gonna use a little card and you just kind of wipe it like this, this kind of action right here. And it's gonna allow us to get a nice even mix and we'll spread it on. Then afterwards, we're going to wrap it with a little bit of grip tape. This is hockey tape. It's a fabric tape. It works really well. Uh, a lot of people are having good results with this. Um, obviously, from playing the hockey, if I can get it to go. Guys, it sticks really good. Come on now. Um, yeah, so it sticks really good down the very edge down to the very edge. It sticks. Well, um, I tried using uh, gaffer tape. Uh, a lot of people talked about using gaffer tape. It's got some good stick activity to it. This is well stick. Um, it does stick well, but it doesn't mold. It doesn't, it's not pl as pliable. Uh, this is, uh, a and R made in USA. Uh, that I got from the amazon.com and you can see where this this tape is has a lot of flexitivity to it so we're gonna use that uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and get some of the JB welds all right we're gonna put a little dab of the red container and about an equal size dab all right little trouble with the JB weld there got a relatively equal sized dabs I'm gonna go ahead and dispose of this because they ain't no good no more and we're just gonna scoop this together you got about equal parts there and you scoop it up just like so scoop it together smear it smear it smear it smear it and then scoop it smear it and scoop it it's kind of the same way you mix Bondo and stuff like that. The smearing it gives it a good mix. You don't stir air bubbles into it so much. Yeah, like a spare credit card or something like that. Membership card. You can use one of those. 
you get it all one color. And I'm just going to apply to all parts of this. This stuff works very well. You don't need a lot. It is a two part epoxy um, with two part steel epoxy, which is why they call it JV Weld. And this should give me what I am looking for as far as a good solid hold. All right, and I'm just gonna drop this on there. The incorrect way. All right, so that's on there now. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this tape here. And it's cloth tape, so you're gonna need something to cut it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a, a rough wrap job here. And I'll probably come back in 15 or 20 minutes here and remove this tape. And uh, that should be fixed very well. Usually I like to give it about 24 hours before that stuff is really good and set. But yeah, that feels good. Already I don't feel a whole lot of flex. So we'll come back here in a little bit and give that a try. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this tape off of there. It does stick very well. All right, let's go ahead and do a, let's do about like almost an arm's length. Kind of. Let's start with Something like that. Alright. I'm just making sure that this contours like I want it to. I am not going to be too, too terribly picky about exactly how it decides to lay. I'm going to try and get it. Lay as flat as possible, though. The nice thing about this stuff is you can kind of change directions as you go. And, and I'm just going to do this to the point where I cover up all the green. Oh, man, I've done and gone and messed it up. Well, so much of that. All right, let's go ahead and just drop a piece of tape. Like so. Kind of halfway in the finger groove there. Okay, so that took me more tries than I thought it would. But um, just... Uh, Stick with it, and uh, you'll wind up having your handle wrapped like uh, like you see fit. I started with it so that uh, in the middle, so that there's uh, only one end that's exposed, and actually, it's this is the very edge of the material right here, and it's difficult to see it, which is good, and it takes a lot actually to kind of brush that edge up. Uh, this stuff sticks very well, it feels good, and uh, it looks like something that uh, more closely aligns with the first two movies, and uh, something that uh, the Ghostbuster me would use. Definitely consider checking out Xander's store, Nerdy Notions, that's nerdy notions with a Z at gmail.com. He also has a Vault Dweller Ghostbuster mashup. That's his card for that. It's really cool. Check it out. Definitely comment, like, subscribe, and share to Peace, Love, and Guns if you want to see more Ghostbusters uh, modification videos and or guns and or car repair videos because I do all of those things for some reason on this channel. I want to thank my Patreon, Tap Theory. 
He is a very cool supporter, which I don't know why this guy is doing that because he's a genius that plays some kind of wicked um, 10 or 12 stringed instrument. He has an awesome cover of the Westworld theme as well as the Ghostbusters theme and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, he seems like a classically trained musician. Check him out. It's Tap Theory. I'm going to put his link down in the doobly-doo. I'm very much surprised that I actually have a Patreon patron, and uh, it's the first in oh, quite some time. If you feel like you might like to do that, definitely check me out on Patreon uh, at uh, Patreon slash Peace, Love, and Guns, and uh, make sure to subscribe. Comment, like, subscribe, share all those wonderful things, and thank you guys for watching.